it's up to the people who are actually in the area and using the resources to decide how best to balance because it matters what we want, right? So in some ways, what we can do is make sure people can make informed decisions by knowing what it is they're balancing, what are they gaining and losing, what are the trade-offs. We have to get people to recognize the soil for the key role it plays in almost all aspects of our life. When we get public recognition, we might then get political recognition. I think we need an, a holistic approach. Uh, all these stakeholders uh, should be committing on this. At the end of the day, uh, you know, if we act together, we can, we can find a solution. Degradation is driven by misplaced inv investment, incentive and policies. So we need to change our policies we need to transition towards better investment and better policies regarding how we manage our land and our soil. We, we shouldn't just think about the farm level, but we need to think about the landscape level to provide the multiple needs that we need from our environment. And so if we, we have a better spatial planning, then we can ensure that we obtain the different needs that we, we require from our landscape rather than just focusing on food or just focusing on water. And so I would say that the multi-sectoral um, process is very much needed, but also a spatial planning from the community level, at the catchment level, at the municipal, municipal level, but even at national level. I think we have two different levels. We have the European level in the sense of um, uh, implementing legislation which already exists, like the, the CAP and environmental legislation, and also regional, national level, local level, because soil protection is better tackled at local level. In order to solve the problem in Europe, we should not export the problem to the third world. We use soil from other countries. É fundamental que essas demandas sejam uh, equilibradas com as demandas e as necessidades das comunidades locais que são, na verdade, as produtoras dessas commodities agrícolas e parte das commodities não agrícolas. Então, um dos equilíbrios fundamentais é o respeito aos direitos dessas comunidades ao direito à alimentação. E nesse particular, é fundamental o respeito aos direitos dos povos indígenas e das comunidades tradicionais no que se refere aos direitos territoriais. A lot of those competing demands are not competing. They're the same thing. If we're looking at, say, environmental, protecting the environment and producing food, if we don't protect the environment, we're not going to be able to produce the food. So it's not really a competing demand. And I think if people start to understand that these things are synergistic rather than competing, it might help.